This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got some fun games lined up for week number 11 in the NFL. A couple of uh, key divisional games. We got Cowboys at Vikings, a tight spread between two NFC powerhouses. We're going to break those down with Ryan Williams to get you set for week number 11 in the NFL and help you fill out your bet slips. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here once again by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, pretty fun slate of games on tap for this week. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Yeah, it, it does look like an enticing slate, and we love that going into the Thanksgiving holiday, as uh, that'll be fun to break down and talk about. But yeah, this week 11 won, and this is a breath of fresh air, breath of fresh air because we've been getting some slates that have kind of been a little bit dicey the past couple yep. of weeks where we felt a little bit uncomfortable with some of our leans. So this one, I think, is shaping up to be one where we can go in with confidence. It does definitely put me in some spots that I feel uncertain about for sure. Like, you know, hypothetically betting a skittish deer like quarterback against Bill Belichick. That seems bad. But, you know, we're going to go uh, and break down those games and let you know what we're seeing across the board at FanDuel Sportsbook. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple wherever uh, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast, we are there. Just search for covering the spread, hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, try out features like same game parlays, play your way and bet on more than just the final score. Wager on everything from touchdowns to total yards to Catches on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So sign up today for your no sweat first bet. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. And in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y And in Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. Now, one of the keys of this week, Ryan, is that every outdoor game basically has wind involved with it, especially on Sunday. There are a lot of windy games. Uh, we got the... The, the Bills-Browns game is getting all the pub because there's snow there potentially, but there is a lot of wind there as well. And that's true for a lot of these East Coast games. So we know that wind drags down the total. That part's pretty obvious. But how else does wind impact your approach to betting a game? You can talk about props here too, but like just overall, uh, how does wind impact the way you view a game? Yeah, it, it honestly doesn't factor in all that much, Jim, especially when we're talking about teams like the Chiefs, teams like the Bills, teams like the Packers at one point. These teams that we know that are going to just be prolific with the pass regardless. Um, and if I can see the numbers move in such a such a way that, you know, the totals coming down kind of ridiculously on a game that really opened up, you know, past the key number of like 43 or so. Um, and people are betting it down because they're afraid of this wind, but they're still two high powered offenses, not somebody, you know, we're not talking about maybe Texans Colts type of thing, but yeah, <laughs> we got like chiefs chargers, like outside. Um, obviously that's going to be in LA, but if that was in Kansas city, I'm just going to be betting the, the, the over here and definitely taking leans on, on teams where, we could still see advantage being taken of in the market. So that's kind of what what I it doesn't factor in for me, but I'm definitely interested when it goes one way versus the other. So with that Bills Browns game right now, the total is 41 yeah. and a half in that one. It's come down about like eight 
or seven or eight points since that opened. And I think a lot of that's because of the forecast of snow. But looking at the forecast right now, the snow's gone Sunday morning. Um, It's still going to be 20 mile per hour winds. And I do care a lot about wind personally in terms of betting totals because like it does, um, it does impact things quite a bit. But we also have a pretty long history of Josh Allen being okay in these conditions. We've seen the total come down. The spread has been tightening, I think, in part because of, um, you know, the the Browns are the better rushing team than the Bills are. Do you have interest in potentially buying against that narrative in that game specifically? Yeah, I think so. Just the way that, you know, listen, the Bills, they got to come out and, and and play. I mean, the, the way that they lost that game against the Vikings, absolutely devastating for Josh Allen, who was questionable all week and then came into that game. And that was going to be a huge win for them because of what they did the week previously to the Jets. And now you're looking at two straight losses for this team really, you know, having to fight back in a, in a tough AFC division or AFC conference, excuse me. I think that they really, you know, want to go full throttle here. And we've seen Cleveland Brown games all year go go over insanely because they they love what they do. They want to run the ball. They want to establish. They want to be able to, you know, keep up in games where they're forced to score points. So if the Buffalo Bills are driving the narrative, we Cleveland's going to try everything that they can to stay in this game. Um, it, it, it just screams to me that this is going to be a game that will go over its total, which if it gets down to, you know, in the 40, 39 range, like this is absolutely incredible value here that it game opened up at 44. Yeah. This is something we talked about with Colin Wilson on the college football episode. We were talking about wind with him and the impact of that. And he will, he said that there are some times where he will bet it early in the week, bet the under because of the wind, the forecast, because again, it does matter a lot. And then there are situations where he may cash out that bet after, after a while, if he gets the read that has gone too far, um, things of that nature. So with this one, we have seen a lot of movement. I think it's worthwhile to at least give thought to potentially taking a look at the, the, the total here, obviously the total, uh, coming down does relate to the spread as well. Cause it's hard to cover a larger spread and a lower total. So, I would at least take a look at it and see if there may have been an overreaction because that game specifically has gotten a lot of buzz for the weather this week. Let's dive into some games now for week number 11, starting off with a big AFC East game. It's the Jets at the Patriots. It's fun to have a a Jets Patriots game in November that matters. Um, So I think that's kind of a thrill as it is. Patriots are three and a half point favorites. Total is 38 and a half. We just saw this matchup a couple weeks ago. And in that one, Zach Wilson had like, three or four melt days where he kind of, you know, tried to chuck the game away. The Jets did claw back and actually were competitive towards the end of that one. But can the Jets mask the Wilson meltdowns enough to cover or potentially even win this game? I I don't think so. Um, <laughs> it, it, this is just, I mean, look at the traditional, look at this matchup traditionally. I'm, the Patriots have absolutely owned the Jets. The Jets haven't, I don't believe they've won a game in like the past 14 matchups um, yeah. with it. And that was an overtime loss that they experienced in, in 2016. Um, it doesn't matter. Tom Brady, Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, who's back there, like Bill Belichick just has this team's number. And, you know, we're looking at a Jets side where the game earlier this year, they only lost by the Jets. They only lost by five points. But we had Brees Hall, you know, who was their their key offensive piece, who was able to carry their way. Now it's Zach Wilson with, you know, a different type of situation. There are receivers who are unhappy. The running backs haven't been able to get going. The defense has been pretty pretty okay, but the Patriots will find ways um, to be able to, you know, dictate the pace here in this matchup. I mean, this is one where it, it just, you know, I think people will look at the Jets and be like, man, the defense is great and they've played against some competent teams. And even though they're going into, you know, New England, that they have a chance here and the Patriots will come out and just blow the doors off of this team because that's how these matchups go all the time. This three and a half spread, this three and a half spread, the uh, Jets have only covered by this number in one matchup um, since since 2016. Um, and that was in 2020 when they lost by three points. So this is a really favorable number that you're getting the Patriots at. And it's really one that I want to be on. This yeah. Week. So the, the first meeting was week eight. So it was actually pretty recent. That was the first game without Brees Hall. So Hall was not in that game. Um, okay. But it, it was a, an odd game regardless because, and like, I, I bet the Jets plus three and a half here. Um, so like I did, I did do that. Um, and I have pause with that because 
the things the Patriots do best, which is like third down defense and making quarterbacks make mistakes, are the things the Jets are worst at. Like the Jets early down offense this year has actually been pretty decent. It's been the late downs when Zach Wilson gets pressured where things kind of just combust. Now, the reason I decided to bet the Jets here, despite concerns around Zach Wilson, was in large part because the Patriots offense. Ryan, I kind of think it sucks. And that's a big <laughs> part of why I decided to... I, my numbers are showing value. That was the key reason I looked into it. But the reason I was actually willing to buy into what my own numbers were saying is because I think this offense just sucks. Uh, if I look at like my my numbers, just like uh, it has a prior in there still. So it's going to boost up the pages a little bit. Mm-hmm. My numbers with priors had New England ranked 29th in total <laughs> offense right now. That's below the Jets. The Jets are 24th by that number. So... That's why I was okay taking the Jets. Does it make me feel good? No. Maybe I think the takeaway is maybe we just look at the under 38 and a half. I know it's a very low number, but like if I'm skeptical of the Patriots offense against a very good Jets defense, and I'm worried about the Patriots defense against a skittish quarterback, maybe I should just take the under. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's always a good look when you got these two teams playing uh, because I just, I, I just find it hard that the Jets are going to be able to to try and find some points here. Um, he In his, in Zach Wilson's uh, two starts versus New England, this kid has seven interceptions. Yeah. I mean, that's not what, ideal. That's what we're dealing with here. Not ideal. Um, and and that's, that's really – that's what drives the Patriots, like, in these matchups where they're, you know – when they're favored to win and where you see them like really explode and, and exploit defenses is when their defense makes it hard on the other offense. They'll get some short fields for Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Harris, what have you, and just be able to control and dictate the game script. And that's what they, that's what their MO is. Yeah. And the Jets need to make sure they do not trail in this game because a negative game script, Zach Wilson would be much worse than a, neutral situation thing for sure okay let's move to what i think is the most fun game of the week that is the cowboys at the vikings right now cowboys one and a half point favorites in minneapolis total is 47 and a half and the cowboys they had some DAC short circuits last week a bit of a blip there uh some bad turnovers against the packers they probably should have won that game and i think that they on a like a talent perspective would have usually but can they rebound here and win as favorites against the vikings yeah I think that they that they can. Um, you love that this game has a different vibe around it, right? They were traveling into Lamb, um, I believe, fresh off of the of a bye, and uh, you know, cold narrative type of thing. It's a play in in Minnesota, but it's gonna you know be covered a little bit warmer for this team. Um, and they they got some they got some dog in them with that with that defense there. I think they want to come out here and really show that they you know belong at the top of the NFC crop here. And the, the Vikings they really have you know found themselves in a situation where yeah their record speaks for itself. Right, the only loss against a Philly Philly team that you know looks vulnerable at this at this point in time, but really gotten away with some close victories here um especially when we're looking off of the bye you know that Arizona game could have gone either way they won that by eight on um, the Washington game they kind of needed some late magic to win that game by three and then we know what just happened in Buffalo it was like I mean Justin Jefferson goes out and makes an incredible catch but like Josh Allen still had a chance to you know get this team back into into good graces so I feel like this team is just riding at an all-time high right now I think people will love taking the Vikings here, um, getting the getting the points and the Cowboys will go overlooked. Um, and I, I just think they they have the you know, they have a huge pressure rate on defense that they, they can make Kirk Cousins life miserable. Um, and if we can get Dak and the offense, you know, the gears kind of running here in this matchup against the Vikings defense, I think that we can see the, the Cowboys pull away here. It's a good number at one and a half. Yeah, I think that is a, a pretty interesting number for sure. My numbers aren't showing any value here. It has the it has a, basically a toss up. Um, yep. So I'm going to stay away from betting it. But the key thing that I think is worth monitoring is this one. I think the injury report matters a lot more for this game than it does. I mean, it matters for every week. But like I think for this one, it's especially pertinent. Uh, that's because uh, Christian Darisaw, the Vikings left tackle, is in concussion protocol. Didn't practice Wednesday. If he practices Thursday on a limited basis, that would be a very good thing for the Vikings because you don't want to face, I mean, I know DeMarcus Lawrence is also banged up, but um, you've got DeMarcus Lawrence there. You've got uh, Micah Parsons there. I think that that is um, a little bit concerning. 
uh, to have, if those two guys both wind up being healthy, that could be an issue uh, for the Vikings. Yeah. So keep an eye on specifically Christian Derrissaw, see what his, um, see what his status is as the week goes along right now uh, for the Cowboys. DeMarcus Lawrence didn't practice on Wednesday, Anthony Barr, who didn't practice or didn't play last week, which forced um, uh, Micah Parsons into more of like a, linebackery type role than a pass rusher role. Anthony Barr did get into practice Wednesday. He was limited there with a hamstring injury. So if we get Lawrence Barr with no Derrissaw, then I think I could consider pulling the trigger on the Cowboys. I'm most likely not going to, but I think that that'd be a really rough thing for them to deal with. So I think as with every game, Keep a close eye on the injury report, but specifically here, check out status of bars, check out the status of uh, Lawrence and check out the status of Darisaw because that'll be a pretty key factor in this game. And also Anthony Barr revenge game. Let us not forget the most oh, important, the most important aspect of this game. Absolutely. Love that. Love that, Jim. All righty. Let's finish up here with the Chiefs at the Chargers. Spread is down to five and a half here at this game in Los Angeles. Total is 50 and a half. And the spread had been six and a half. But then uh, on Wednesday, both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams were able to practice on Wednesday. So do you think the Chargers keep pace in what is kind of effectively a must win game here? Yeah, I think <laughs> it's always it's always that slippery slope, right, Jim, when you and I are talking about the Chargers here. But yep. at home, uh, this these are this feels like a lot of points for the Chargers to be giving um, to the Chiefs. You know, if this was closer to, you know, maybe like a four and a half, four, um, I might be looking at the Chiefs here. But the Chiefs have, have played some pretty close games here when, when things can, you know, go awry. I think the, the huge thing for the Chargers is how the health is looking on defense. That's going to be huge. But this offense for Kansas City is absolutely, you know, a, a shell of itself. They got pieces missing on both sides of the ball. Patrick Mahomes is going to be down with some key weapons there. You know, the secondary for the Chargers absolutely loves that. And if, yeah, if we can just get one of the two pieces back for Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen or Mike Williams, um, I think that this, this narrative around this game is going to change. So I want to get the five and a half points now while I can, especially with all these injuries that Kansas City is dealing with. And this is, you know, two teams that, you know, are, are pretty prolific when it comes to scoring the ball. Some of these games have, have been a lot closer. I mean, you're looking at spreads of three, um, five, six, three, um, six again, you know, overtime games. They, they, they love to play against each other and play competitively. So um, if we can get some healthy pieces on the Chargers side, that's definitely a number we want to get in on. Don't mention that overtime game ever again. Uh, that was a game where I had the Chargers spread, and I'm pretty sure it was three and a half, and they lost in a Kelsey touchdown uh, in overtime. It was <laughs> like... Is that painful for you, Jim? It was bad, man. I, I want to like double check this to make sure that's like... At, but I'm pretty sure it was three and a half. I know that it might have been three, so it might have been a push had they lost in a field goal, but it was so bad. I, and I like I did... I can't complain because I won a game based on a, a similar situation last year too. It was the, uh, the Cowboys-Patriots game. They couldn't have covered a touchdown in OT and then CeeDee Lamb scores. So like I have benefited from these situations, but like... Absolutely my brain just kind of like, ah, it like, it like, ah, it just like melds <laughs> together when I hear overtime chiefs chargers. So oh, uh, that I hurt, but you did touch on a, an important thing in this game. And it's, it's not talking about the chargers receivers it's talking about the, the chiefs receivers because Juju Smith Schuster's uh, situation last week did not look good. That was ugly. Right. Yes. And so a lot of times you do see guys clear concussion protocol within a week I really kind of doubt Juju will. So that's concern number one. Marquez Zelda Scantling, uh, he has an illness. He'll probably be okay to go. He missed practice Wednesday. Nico Hardman has an abdomen slash illness, is listed on the injury report, didn't practice Wednesday. He didn't practice at all last week, was ruled out Friday. And the fact he didn't practice again Wednesday says to me that he's probably on the, the wrong side of questionable. So I think we could be trending toward a situation where the Chiefs are going in Likely with MVS, uh, likely with Tony, Justin Watson, stuff like that. But I think they're going to be without Juju and Hardman. And so when I look at my numbers before accounting for those injuries, I've added uh, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen back in. Or I added Mike Williams. I'm not at Allen back. I just need to see that before I believe he'll actually play. Um, <laughs> but my numbers with Williams back in at the Chiefs favor by 7.38 because the Chiefs real good. I can't bet that though. I can't bet the five and a half now because I'm concerned about the Chiefs' injuries because those are not in my numbers yet because I don't want to 
rule them out before they're they're out. Um, so that's why I'm not pulling the trigger. And I think that your sentiment towards wanting to be on the Chargers is likely correct because we may be undervaluing the injuries on the Chiefs side of this one. Yes, ab- absolutely. And and it's just one that we have not seen in, in a while, right? But mm-hmm. I, I think that it, it always just goes down to saying that, yeah, this is five and a half, maybe not the six, six and a half that we would tend to look at when these Chargers are favorite or um, are uh, uh, dogs by a touchdown, yeah. right? And we just hammer that all the time because Justin Herbert just finds ways Correct. to will this team into competitive competitive nature where the game is close in the fourth quarter um even still at five and a half with these pieces that he's getting back i mean especially playing at home like i just feel like five and a half is just a number that the points are just too much for me to lean in the chief's favor who you know have had troubles um covering a number like this that's kind of close to a touchdown even when they're at home yeah Uh, I'm glad. So like, I was kind of annoyed they flexed this game to Sunday night because it takes it off the DFS main slate, but it will be nice to get to watch this game with no distractions. So I guess I can take that as a minor consolation (laughs) there. Okay. Where else is he in value across week number 11 of FanDuel Sportsbook, Ryan? Yeah. So we'll talk about a couple teams here. Um, Let's start it off um, in the early Early go. Uh, I got to talk about the Bears. I mean, I haven't had a chance to talk <laughs> about the Bears with you, Jim. Uh, we're getting three points here. Uh, the Bears are getting three points going into Atlanta. Um, you're not having to worry about any weather factors there. Um, and I and I just don't know what type of offense identity the Atlanta Falcons have, like right at this point, which is m- probably music to the defensive coordinator of the Bears' ears because the defense has really been the been the uh, catalyst for these losses um when they're losing these leads late and of course they you know they've lost them at home so i know that the line makes sense here but you know the way that justin fields has been playing with this offense you know if they're able to score points like they did against the lions like they did against miami i just don't know how atlanta can keep up with this team um they are going to need a little bit from their defense there to to help keep it in in float but I, you know, getting three points here for the Bears, I, I got to look at that as a favorable number. Um, I also am interested in the Eagles, if you can believe it. Um, I believe we have them at six and a half still. I know that they opened at seven. I've seen them at seven a couple places. But, you know, this is this is one of those prime spots, Jim, where people just saw this team on national television where they were, you know, uh, double digit favorites and kind of let one slip and people are questioning whether they you know should be at the top but this was an undefeated team for a reason and everybody's riding high on the Colts because of what Jeff Saturday was able to come in to do that's the that's the Super Bowl for Indy right now as far as I'm concerned like the fact that they were able to go out there and get that win when everybody was doubting them and what's going to happen there Jim Ursay's talking about it tweeting about it like there's so much that was invested into that win that I think they're just not even looking ahead to a Philly team that just lost Austin is going to be coming in there hungry and ready to go. So I'm willing to take the seven there with the Eagles to kind of bounce back. And then last but not least, I got to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers here. We get a rematch matchup from week one going against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals are banged up on offense um, a lot differently than what this was in week one. Um, And when TJ Watt played, TJ Watt is now back. The Steelers have not lost the game. It's only been two, but TJ Watt makes a ton of difference on that defense. And we've seen, you know, Joe Burrow really struggle if the defense has been able to get pressure. So I'm willing to get the points on them, which is three and a half right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, Four is a couple other places, but I'm willing to get that three and a half number there. Yeah, with the Eagles, my numbers had that game at 6.89. So on board with you where um, it's six and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that if you're going to bet that game, I go towards the Eagles because um, they did lose Dallas Goddard, but hey, they get Tyree Jackson back this week. And (laughs) What else yep. could we possibly care more about Darling. than a converted quarterback playing tight end who's six foot seven? If you're gonna <laughs> like win my heart, win it with a six foot seven former tight end, former quarterback playing tight end. Yes. Put that guy in the Taysom Hill role, and that's boogie. Like I'm, I'm down for that. Um, so yeah, I think that the Eagles potentially a tiny bit undervalued with the Steelers Bengals game. I went into this week expecting to be on the the Bengals side here yeah. because I'm not a huge Steelers guy based on what my numbers say. So it opened at four and a half. I actually did 3.76. So it's moved to three and a half. Now I think that's appropriate. Uh, and like, yeah. 
I don't know, man. They just get the job done. Uh, you <laughs> have TJ Watt back. Like you said, Minka Fitzpatrick didn't play last week. Had an appendectomy, but is apparently going to play this week, which seems, I mean, good for, Very I've had odd. an appendectomy. I would not want to be playing football week after. Like, right. good for you, dude. Um, built different. Uh, but I, having both those guys there, I think is going to make a, a pretty big difference. We saw them play well, even without Fitzpatrick last week. That could be a pretty fun one. So I thought I'd be on the Bengals, but. They're a volatile offense, and uh, I think this uh, Steelers team is better than maybe I was giving them credit for uh, earlier on. All righty. That's all we got here for week number 11 in the NFL. But, Ryan, I think it should be a pretty fun week, and uh, looking forward to talking about some Monday Night Football. We've got uh, the Cardinals and 49ers in Mexico City to talk about on Monday. That's going to be a lot of fun. It will be a lot of fun. I can't wait. And then we gear up for Thanksgiving week, Jim, which is yeah. always the fun slate to talk about. So good luck to everybody in week 11. We'll catch you guys next time. Yeah, you can find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. We'll have him on next week, Monday and Wednesday. We'll talk about some Thanksgiving football games and also preview week 12. So two Ryan episodes next week still, despite the truncated week. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in. Good luck to you with your bets for week number 11. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down player props with J.J. Zacharyson. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 